All right, today we're going to do some harder multi-step events, which is really just combining what we've done in the previous two lessons, okay? And this stuff tends to be the hardest thing in this topic, so expect you may need to go over this a couple of times, but do try to understand this. Um, it tends to be very commonly asked in exams and stuff like that. So let's have a read of this. There's six green jelly beans. There are nine blue jelly beans. Two are chosen without replacement. That means that we take our first one, right? But we don't put it back. We take the second one straight, straight away, straight after that, okay? And we want the probability of selecting all of those things there, which we will not worry about for now. Let's try and make sense of just the experiment first. There's six greens, there are nine blues, there they are. Okay. Now, when I take my first jelly bean, it's going to turn out to be either green or blue. There are only two possibilities there. Okay, and they are green and blue. And previously, when we did tree diagrams, um, every outcome in my tree diagram was equally likely. But this time, you can probably quite clearly see it's not the case. All right, because there are more blue jelly beans, we have a higher chance of getting a blue one. So it's helpful to stop here and label each branch with the probability of selecting that outcome. Okay, so with six greens and nine blues, there are 15 jelly beans in total. Six of them are green, nine of them are blue. So the probabilities you get should be six out of 15 for the green and nine out of 15 for the blue. Okay. Now for my second stage in the tree diagram, so I'm going for my second selection now. Um, if my first one ends up green, what's that going to do? Well, that means that because I'm not putting it back, I'm going to actually remove a green jelly bean from the pile. So there won't be 15 in total anymore. There's going to be only 14 in total. Okay, and out of these 14, I'm going to select my second jelly bean. And that second jelly bean could, again, either be green or blue. Okay, now this time the probabilities are going to be a bit different because I've taken one of those green ones out. So actually, there are only five greens left. And so only five out of 14 of them are green. But with the blue ones, I haven't touched any of those, so there are still going to be nine of them. And so the probability of hitting a blue one now is nine out of 14. And that's what happens if I chose a green one first. But what if I chose a blue one first? What if my first jelly bean ended up being blue? Well, it's very similar. All right, there are still only 14 jelly beans in total, but this time I've removed a blue one, not a green one. Once again, for my second jelly bean, there are two possibilities. They are either green or blue. All right, but this time, because I've removed a blue one, there are only eight blues left. And so the chance of getting another blue is only going to be eight out of 14. This time with the green ones, well, I haven't touched any of those. There are still six of them. And so the chance of getting a green one here is going to be six out of 14. Okay, so all we've done there is seen the effect of the first choice on the second. Okay, because what you get first is going to have an impact on the second jelly bean that you get. Okay, and now that we've worked out those probabilities, we can actually go and answer the questions now. So the first one asks for the probability of getting two greens. So that's what we're looking for. Now, two greens just means that we have to get a green first and a green second. And so only this outcome from the tree diagram is valid. And again, this happens in two steps. My first jelly bean has to be green. That happens with probability six out of 15. And then my second jelly bean has to be green. That happens with probability five out of 14. And like we did a couple of lessons ago, we need to multiply those two to put their probabilities together. Okay, so first jelly bean being green and then second being green means we multiply those ones. We get one out of seven for that then. Okay. 
All right, so that's the first one. Second one asks for the probability of two blue jelly beans. Well, we do it in much the same way. Two blue means we have to be going down these branches of the tree diagram. And that happens again in two steps. The first jelly bean has to be blue with probability 9 out of 15. And then the second one has to be blue. So we multiply by the 8 out of 14. This time we get 12 out of 35. Okay, third one asks for at least one green jelly bean. Okay, now what does that mean? At least one means I have one green jelly bean or more than one. Okay, the, the whole point is I have to have a green jelly bean somewhere in there. I could have one, I could have both green, it doesn't matter. But I've got to have green somewhere in there. That's what that means. Well, here are my greens on the tree diagram, right? And be careful with this, because while I've circled three of them, actually, these ones are not, they're not outcomes, are they, right? Because that's only the first selection. The actual outcomes on the tree diagram are here, okay? And so which outcomes, which are the outcomes that involve, that include at least one green jelly bean? So having a green somewhere in there. Well, I think there's three. We can have a green first, and if I have a green first, there's my green one already. So that's going to be included in my final outcomes. Uh, no matter what the second one is, I could have the second one green, uh, and that's okay, right? Or I could have the second one blue, but that doesn't matter, right? Because I've already got a green in my first selection. So I'm going to include those two outcomes. If my first one's a blue, well, that's okay still because maybe my second one's a green. And that still counts as part of this event because I still have at least one green in there. So really, we've narrowed down our uh, possibilities we're interested in to these three. These are the three outcomes we want to be adding up. And we could proceed by adding up all those three, or we could see that we just want everything except for this one. We just don't want this one. We don't want to have two blue, right? And so actually the probability of getting at least one green is the same as the probability of not getting two blue, right? You might need to look through that again uh, a couple of times, but the idea is that getting at least one green is the opposite of getting no green at all, right? The opposite of at least one is getting none at all, is getting no greens whatsoever, right? And that's easier because you can see from the tree diagram, right? Getting no green at all is actually an easy calculation because there's only one way to do that, and that's if they're both blue. So the chance of getting at least one green is the same as the chance of not getting them both blue, and from last lesson, we know that equals 1 minus the chance that they're both blue. But we've just done that. Getting both blue is 12 out of 35. And so we do 1 minus 12 out of 35, and that equals 23 out of 35. Okay, And that is the same answer you would get if you added up all of those yellow outcomes by multiplying the two green green and green blue and blue green and adding up all those answers. You could get the same thing, but this is the easiest way. Okay, And this is really uh, the what you should be thinking about when the question asks for the chance of at least one. Right, It's most often the easiest to um, look at the probability of getting none at all and then going one minus off of that, okay? All right, part D. Two jelly beans which are the same color. Well, the same color means we uh, might have them both green or both blue. And those are our two options. And so the probability of getting the same color is when you add those two options together. Good thing we did those already, so that's going to be the 1 in 7 for two greens plus the 12 in 35 for the two blues. And so we get 17 out of 35. Okay. And finally, the last one, uh, two jelly beans which are different colors. Okay. Well, different colors just means that rather than getting green, green and blue, blue, 
if my first ones are green, I want my second one to be blue. And if my first ones are blue, I want my second one to be green. But we can do the same thing we did with the at least question, where getting a different color just means they are not the same color. So if we've just worked out the chance they are the same color, well, not same color means everything else. And so we can do one minus the chance they are the same color. And so again, we've just done that. That can come across and we can get 18 out of 35 that way. Okay. So look out for those complementary events we saw last time. I think they were quite obvious to see in last time's work, but in these situations, it might be a bit harder to spot, but keep an eye out for it because it often makes uh, these sorts of questions a lot easier to deal with. Okay. All right, one more example. This is from a past paper. Um, there are two unbiased dice, each with normal faces, one, two, three, four, five, six. We roll them, and what's the probability of a six appearing on at least one of the dice? Okay, you can see that phrase, at least one appearing again. All right, so like last time, we can express uh, the outcomes of this experiment in a tree diagram. When you roll a die, there's six possibilities with the numbers one to six. Okay. But I won't keep it this way, because you see from the question that I only care about whether a 6 appears or not. So I can simplify this tree diagram if I just group 1 to 5 together into just the event not getting a 6, while 6 gets its own special event. Okay. But when we do this, these two events, these two possibilities are, of course, no longer equally likely. We see that not getting a six actually has five options. I could get numbers one, two, three, four, or five. So that happens with probability five out of six, right? Whereas um, getting a six happens with probability one out of six. Okay, that's for my first die. My second die, well, Actually, the first one doesn't affect the second one at all. So the same possibilities happen if my first one gets not a six. It, it's the same situation. The second one could be not six with probability five out of six, or it could be a six with probability one out of six. So it's exactly the same situation because the outcome of my first die does not affect the outcome of my second die. So if I get a six, the same thing happens and it doesn't change anything, okay? All right, now I want the probability of a six appearing on at least one of the dice. So I'm gonna think the same thing I did last time where six is appearing in these possibilities and so um, all of these outcomes include a six somewhere in there, right? These three outcomes, but once again, it's easier if I don't think about adding up these three possibilities, it's easier to think of at least one six being the opposite of getting no sixes at all. And so we just don't want this outcome. Okay, now what's the chance that that happens? What's the chance of not getting any sixes whatsoever? Well, getting no sixes means that we want to miss the six. So look back at the tree diagram. We want to miss the six on our first roll with probability five out of six. And then we want to miss it again on our second roll with probability five out of six again. We multiply them and we get 25 out of 36. Okay. And so again, if we want to have at least one six appearing, it means we don't want to miss it altogether. We want to have a six somewhere in there. And so we want to get everything. So one, take away the probability we just got of getting no sixes at all. And we get 11 out of 36. Okay. So I thought I'd show you that example um, just to give you another uh, case of this at least expression appearing. Hopefully that one makes sense. Uh, but again, you might want to rewatch some of that if you need to. Um, but the other thing I wanted to show you in this example was what happens if the first outcome 
doesn't affect the second one. So see how all of those probabilities um, are the same. It's 5 over 6, 1 over 6, 5 out of 6, 1 out of 6, and they haven't changed, okay? Because in some experiments, the first outcome affects the second, but in some experiments, it doesn't, and this is a case where it doesn't. Okay, and by reading the question carefully, you need to determine whether or not the first outcome has any effect on the second one. Okay, in this case it didn't, in the jelly bean one it did. Okay, all right, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.